Coming up on ATV News. A local deputy shot and killed a man in Logan Canyon. We'll give you the latest on this developing story. These people are getting their hands dirty. See why it's worth working in the rain. This cash cab isn't the one on TV. We'll tell you the inspiration for your local taxi. You saw the Aggies beat Arkansas State from the stands. We'll show you your favorite plays from field level. We've had beautiful weather all week. Coming up, I'll tell you what to wear to the homecoming game. All that and more, this is ATV News. This helicopter came to pick up a man shot by deputies Monday afternoon, and it ended up leaving empty. Welcome to ATV News. I'm Ben Nielsen. And I'm Morgan Pratt. And we have some developing news today in the Logan Canyon. Abby Lewis will take us there now. Abby? Thanks, Morgan. I'm here at the bottom of Right Hand Fork in Logan Canyon, where an investigation is taking place because of a shooting between a man and an officer. Cache County deputies closed off all of Logan Canyon to preserve their scene. They responded to the report of a suicidal man around 10.30 a.m. Monday morning. When officers arrived, they say they found 30-year-old Jeremy Ray Swenson with a weapon. They say Swenson was making threatening actions towards a woman. The suspect did not respond to commands to drop the weapon. The suspect then made a threatening motion with the weapon requiring the deputy to fire a single shot, wounding the suspect. Once they knew the woman was safe, Swenson was taken to the Logan Regional Hospital. Life flight was on standby, but he was pronounced dead at the hospital. Because this is a shooting involving a police officer, the Logan City Police Department is conducting an investigation. The officer's identity has not yet been released. Thanks, guys. Back to you in studio. Thanks, Abby. For more developments on this shooting, visit the Logan City Police Department's Facebook page. Two women are alive after neighbors rescued them from a house fire. Logan City Fire Department was notified on Saturday afternoon that at least one person was trapped inside a building with an active kitchen fire. One of the people was an elderly woman who was on hospice and unable to rescue herself. A neighbor saw the smoke coming from the building and came to her aid. With the help of a friend, the two rescuers were able to get the elderly woman out through the window before the fire department got there. I grabbed the hat and he grabbed the foot and now we, we just take her outside. At that point, the fire department found another woman still trapped inside and managed to safely pull her out. If you have severe allergies, you may have to buy EpiPens after a recent price hike that may not be easy to afford. EpiPens save lives, but they don't help with bank accounts. A pack of two EpiPens can cost up to $600, and the injectors only last a year before they expire. Even the generic brand isn't much cheaper, and if you don't have insurance, you could still be paying that high price of $600. I think they know that they can charge. I think they know that they can charge that because people, I mean, like you say, it's life or death, so people are going to pay for it, and so I think it's unfair because they do that knowing this information. A USU researcher says he might have found a vaccination that could protect you and your kids from the Zika virus. Researchers in this lab prepared compounds for testing against Zika, one of which could prevent the virus from spreading. Not quite as attention-grabbing or exciting as finding a cure, but yeah, we're, we're uh, very, it's, it's a difficult process, and it's a very time-consuming and expensive process, and we're only involved in the first little bit of that. Jewlander says the lab doesn't create vaccinations, they just test pre-made ones on mice. The vaccination will take several years to make and cost millions of dollars before it's available to the public. Across the nation, Native Americans are protesting the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline, including USU students. I went to that protest on Saturday to see why critics of the pipeline are so worried about the Native Americans' access to clean drinking water. Not long ago, the Department of Emergency Services allocated $6 million to contain these indigenous people. The protesters in Utah sang and prayed for those who fought against the Dakota Access Pipeline at Standing Rock Reservation in North Dakota. Woo! Woo! 
There are nearly 500 people here at the Utah Capitol to stand with those at Standing Rock. Including more than 50 Aggies who protested the construction of the pipeline. that they're putting the pipelines in is sacred and it's important for us to protect it and not only that protect mother earth because without it we pretty much have nothing you don't contain peaceful protesters and treat them that way i felt like i had to be here i didn't know why i needed to be here but i felt like this is where I needed to be. Who knows, someday it could turn around and you could be the one that is being oppressed. The founder of Aggies for Standing Rock says the protest is important even after the Obama administration ordered a construction halt on September 9th. Obama asked for the company to voluntarily put a halt and they haven't. So construction is continuing, including in that range that Obama asked them not to do construction in. Morgan Pratt, ATV News. Aggies for Standing Rock are still collecting donations for the natives. For more information on how to donate, check out our Facebook page. Coming up on ATV News, there's a new way to get fresh produce from the hassle without the hassle of raising your own garden. And we'll take you up into the Logan Canyon to see what's inspiring students to put down their textbooks and pick up a fishing pole. Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your stuff. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite okay. NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. Utah State University's students' newspaper recently won a total of 33 awards for graphic design, layout, opinion pieces, and breaking news and feature stories. The Utah State's student journalists have competed against other colleges and university, but they've also won against other professional newspapers. They won against the journalists in, U in Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, and New Mexico. The students have received awards from several groups, including the Society of Professional Journalists, the Society of Professional Journalists in Utah, and the Utah Press Association. While the statesman has won in the past, their advisor says this year was particularly lucky. And so to, to win 33 awards, um, a lot of first places, I think we had 10 or 11 first places out of that. Um, is really impressive. One award winner was a former ATV News team member, Jeffrey Dada, who won several awards, including one for writing about breaking news of Mad Maverick Stadium's construction. The College of Humanities and Social Sciences, or CHAS, is upgrading, but not till it can get $50 million. The Ray B. West and Family Life buildings of Utah State are some of the oldest on campus. But because CHAS is running out of space for classrooms and offices, it's now looking to fund a new building. It'll have lecture halls, classrooms, and offices. The CHAS Advising Office, Utah Public Radio, and Museum of Anthropology are also going to be moving into the new building. You know, we need a home for CHAS. There's going to be study areas for people to be able to study, um, a lot of area for people to intermingle with one another and kind of just have our home. That's really what we're trying to shoot for. If you want a garden but don't think you have the time to grow one, there's a farmer just outside of Logan who's ready to help you out. These folks are out there picking their own fresh produce at Farmer Dale's Community Garden. You can get peppers, watermelon, cantaloupe, and several kinds of tomatoes. Just pick a bucket, pick from your own produce, and exactly whatever you need. Owner 
Others say it's fun time for the whole family to sort through the garden and to find the perfect produce. They want their kids to have a farm experience, you know, and so they come out and let the kids pick tomatoes and take pictures of them and everything. The community you pick farm is open from dawn until dusk, Mondays through Saturdays until the ground freezes. A new trail is being built in Logan Canyon. Our Amy Coke babe hiked up Beaver Mountain to show us the trail blazing volunteers. I personally love to build trails. I think it's it's almost as fun as riding. All right. This trail, I think, is going to be one of the best trails. This will be a great addition. The, the nice thing about this is where it's, it's for multiple use, but it is somewhat purpose-built. As far as how it's built, it works very well for um, mountain bikers as well as hikers. We have to dig it ourselves. You have to come in, cut a corridor, a, an open space, kind of as you can see here. Then you'll come in and put down what they call tread. Then you'll do some finishing to make sure that uh, the water drains appropriate and that the, the trail is going to last a long time. Hey! Sophomores! Sophomores! Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. We're doing this as a community project. Um, you know, we can have volunteers and Eagle Scout projects. <laughs> We love seeing the kids out here, the positive experience they're having, you know, the camaraderie. This is going to be the best part of the trail right here because the sophomores built it. Everybody's very excited and everybody wants to come help with this. So it's, it's a really neat opportunity that everybody can have that chance to come in and work as well as come play. Although the first part of the trail should be finished before November, the entire trail probably won't be finished until this time next year. But that's not the only thing happening up in Logan Canyon. Kalen. What's going on? Well, Ben, behind me is the beautiful Logan River. To fly fishers from all over, rivers like this are treasure troves. I went out to see what's reeling all the fishermen in. Fly fishing like this looks easy, but if you've ever tried it, you might not have caught any of these. And it sucks. I went eight times in January and February without catching a single fish. Guides like Colton Van Tussenbrook say, if you practice casting and reading the river, eventually you'll get the hang of it. The experts say fly fishing is so easy, even someone like you or I can do it. We live in like the perfect spot for fly fishing. We have the Logan River that's walking distance from campus. The Blacksmith Fork River is right here in Hiram. Besides the easy to get to rivers, Utah State also offers a fly fishing class. You're going to want to get a little bit of ammo right here. Students in the class learn how to cast correctly and they get coached by a professional. I would say if you've ever thought about this is a great way to learn. Your best bet is to go with someone that does have experience, does know, and find out if you even like it. If you thought fly fishing was too hard for you, remember, the pros say it just takes a little practice. If you're interested in giving fly fishing a shot, here's a look at some of our latest local fishing reports. The DWR and fishermen that are fishing locally here say that it's a great time of year to use some hoppers or an elk hair caddis and that all the, fisher and that all the streams are fishing well. When we come back, we'll take a look at our weekly weather report. Right now, the temperature in Logan is 78 degrees. Nice. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. But that is cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Welcome back. We're glad you're with us, and we're especially glad you're not over here in Wisconsin. Because if you were, you'd be having a lot of rain. In Wisconsin, Illinois, and Minnesota, there's some flash flooding going on. There's some warnings in effect, so make sure you stay out of that part of the country. And if you've got any family over there, you might want to give them a call, tell them to stay inside. 
or they can try going outside and use their couch as a float tube. We have the same situation going on over in North Carolina and Virginia. Uh, there's some coastal flooding warnings going on over there, so same thing. Make sure you stay inside, stay out of the rain, and keep yourself dry. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our state radar and see what we've got going on over here. In Utah, we've got quite a few storms moving through the Salt Lake area, but up by Logan, you can see it's not too bad right now. Uh, it's been pretty sunny today. However, these cells are going to move off the Great Salt Lake and sweep up just a little bit and give us some weather for the next couple of days. That's going to be a little interesting. Let's take a look at our seven-day forecast. Today, it's been great so far, but there's an 80% chance of some thunderstorms tonight. It's going to get down to 47. Tomorrow, we've got scattered thunderstorms as well with an 80% chance of rain. In Friday, it's going to be really, really wet. Saturday, pretty wet as well. And uh, we're going to send it on over to sports. Thanks, Kaylin. When we come back, the Aggies spent a lot of time in the end zone. We'll show you who helped pull out the win. Women's soccer scored their third ever goal against BYU. We'll show you why that wasn't enough coming up. If you store your guns properly, I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. I won't have to tell so many family members. I'm sorry. I won't hear as many scary stories. And I won't have to tell my kids. This isn't a drill. Please. Please, do it for us. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. Up, college is hard. Down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. So every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. My name is Namdi Asamoa. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? Welcome back. Utah State football took on Arkansas State at Maverick Stadium, where the Aggies flew the football in the first half. Quarterback Kent Myers gets things going with this throw into the end zone for a touchdown, Aggies. The field goal, this field goal puts the Aggies up 10-0. USU is on fire as Hobbs scores another touchdown. And then Lindsey Jr. runs the ball into the end zone for yet Another touchdown Aggies. USU leaves the first half leading 24 to zero, but as the sun went down and the moon came up, the Wolves came out. The Wolves gained six with this touchdown, and even though the, ch the crowd is cheering, you will miss it, the Wolves get the extra point. This long pass gets the Wolves into the end zone again, bringing the score 24 to 14. The Aggies kick it into gear with plays like this and find a way to win 34 to 20. I'm very, very proud of our men um, to find a way to win and we should build off that and have some confidence going in um, to Mountain West play beginning next week. The Aggies play Air Force at Maverick Stadium this Saturday for homecoming. The Ridgeline Riverhawks replicated the Aggies first half situation in their first half against the Tooele Buffalo. The Riverhawks came on strong in the first quarter with this touchdown. Even errors like this from number two, Peyton Thomas, couldn't keep the Riverhawks from soaring right down the field into a herd of buffalo. Thomas catches the snap this time only to find no receivers open. The left side is the strong side, which makes the right field empty. Thomas keeps the ball for himself and runs it in for a touchdown. The Buffalo charged back in the second half and won 22-21. Utah State men's tennis began their fall season last weekend in Texas at the Midland Invitational. The team picked up three more singles wins, but all three Aggies got kicked out in the quarterfinals. They'll be back in action this weekend at the ITA All-Americans and the Boise Fall Invite. 
the women's tennis team kicked off their fall I season we were able this to weekend play some good soccer. at the Idaho I State Invite. Freshman Hannah Jones won the singles with a perfect 4-0. Junior Maggie O'Meara and sophomore Kenna Kane teamed up for a doubles title. The Aggies hope their, host their own Invitational this weekend as well as attending the BYU Invitational. Now down to the U where volleyball took on the youth. The Aggies lost in three games, which brings the team record to five wins and six losses. They start Mountain West play tomorrow against Nevada. USU then heads over to San Diego before coming home for matches against Colorado State and Wyoming. On over to Chuck and Gloria Bell Field, where the Aggies take on nationally ranked BYU. The Aggies start out playing some tough defense, but can't stop Ashley Hatch from scoring in the corner. Aggies reply just 15 seconds later as Bailey Hammond passes to Jessica Brooksby with the goal. The Cougars kick it into gear and score again in the first half. And then they score again in the second half. Aggies played some tough offense but ran out of time to get the win. I thought we were able to play some good soccer. I think the deciding factor was we weren't able to do it for 90 minutes. The Aggies take on Colorado State at home this Friday. Now you're caught up in sports. Back to you at the desk, Morgan and Ben. Thanks so much, Natalie. When we come back, we're going to take a look at what makes Logan unique. While jousting usually involves horses and poles, that's not the only way these Loganites do it. We'll show you how they change the sport. And when the community needs to let loose, swing dancing is a great stress reliever. We'll let you know when and where the party is moving. Today. Aww. You should pick that up. Every day, kids witness bullying. For you. They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy. Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, and she even talks to it. They want to help, but don't know how. Who's she talking to? Teach your kids. Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy. Oh, and she even talks to it. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. So, I got this new family, and I don't know what it is. Welcome back. Today we're taking a look at what makes Logan unique and a little bit strange. You've heard of jousting with a horse and a lance, but how about with boards and paddles? I took a look at people giving this medieval tradition an aquatic take. Both each other and the cold water in the first annual paddleboard joust. A crowd gathered to watch two teams of four jousters stare each other down, paddle at each other, and start swinging. Out on the water, it's super cold, so it's a really good incentive not to fall in. The objective was just to try to stay on your board, which I thought we did a really good job. Way to go, Team Stokes. Oh, we have one left standing for Stokes. Then I ended up falling because I crashed into my own teammate. <laughs> so, you know, next year we'll be a little more prepared. Go, Stokes! Basically, I just like took a couple strokes and then I just let my paddleboard coast towards the next person and just like braced myself. Once someone got knocked off their board, they had to lie down on it for the rest of the round. Come on, Josh. People wore weird hats and outfits because there was a costume contest with prizes. I won this from Camp Saver for having the best costume. After the event was over, anyone could use a paddleboard, even me. That way, kids could get on the boards without having to duke it out with each other. I think it's good for people to get out and enjoy the outdoors and nature, and what a fun way to do it. This was the first annual paddleboard jousting tournament, so if you're interested, practice up, and we'll see you on the water next year. Although you may not have heard of the Cash Cab, they're the only 24-hour taxi service in the valley. Mark Rosa shows us how they want to give you a ride home. You know it has the potential to get awkward. 
but aren't you always more comfortable when the driver remembers your name and tries to personally connect with you? They want us to get personal with people and they know that different customers are looking for a different experience. At Cash Cab, customer experience is the most important part of their business and the drivers love relating to their customers. I love it because I get to meet people from every walk of life and I get to hear about their stories and I get to get involved in their lives and I love that part the most. The cab drivers are encouraged to take real interest in their customers' lives and build a friendly relationship based on service. The owners that we have now have an attitude of service. If your main goal is to provide a service, then your whole attitude is different than if your whole, if your whole idea is to make money. Cash Cab is the definition of a service-oriented business created out of necessity. The idea for Cash Cab was born when a man named Sean Franson decided he was tired of walking home late at night from the White Owl. Cash Cab drivers are always willing to go above and beyond to serve their customers and keep potentially dangerous drivers off the road. We fact will go just about anywhere. We do uh, food delivery. We'll even go grocery shopping for you if you need us to. Mark Rosa, ATV. Cash Cab is open 24 hours a day, every day. So, Ben, are you a fan of country swing dancing? Um, no, I hate it, actually. I'm not a big fan of country music, but plenty of people are, uh, including Emily Duke, who actually took us down to show us a little bit about how country swing dancing is different at USU this year. Whether you wear sneakers, go barefoot, or own some boots, Country Swing Dancing is a get down, turn around, go to town, good time at USU. I grew up in a city. I didn't know anything about Country Swing Dancing. I came here. People taught me. If you don't know how to dance, everyone helps each other learn new moves. I started dancing when I was a freshman, and I loved it. Like, I didn't know anyone, but I came with so many people. Like, they took me and they taught me. And with all of the spinning and swinging, it may seem intimidating, but it's actually not so bad. It's really fun and it's high energy and it's easy to pick up on. Like anyone, if they've never danced before, can come and they can learn. And you don't have to know all the moves at once. Learn a few of the basics and get comfortable with it because then you can adapt it and you can change it and add your own flair. The dancers keep moving and now the venue is moving too. Dancing happens every Wednesday night at the Fun Park, but for now, Monday night dancing is going to be happening here at the Lundstrom Center on campus. Mondays at the Lundstrom Center are working for now. Club leadership says they just want to keep Monday nights alive, even if it means still going somewhere out else. Closet. We would love to get us okay. started back up. All start. After, you know, after I finish, all start. Take us. I'll start. Yeah. They say they just want everyone to keep enjoying dancing for all the reasons that they love it. I meet friends, hear dance, get least some stress. It's just the best place to be. Emily Duke, ATV Kids. Dancing costs $6 at the Fun Park or four for club members and $3 at the Ludstrom. Now, sorry, I didn't mean to offend anybody. I, I do like country swing dancing. I'm just <laughs> not very good at it, all right? I don't know, what do you, have you guys ever done country swing? I haven't, but I was a clogger when I was in high school and I was on a pro team, so that was pretty fun. It's similar, I guess. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah. Kaylin, do you dance? No, not at all. <laughs> uh, the more amount of time I can spend up in the mountains trying things like fly fishing, even though, as we saw earlier, I'm not very good at it, <laughs> I need a little practice, that's way better than time spent for me on the dance floor. That's true. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of ATV News. The Mr. USU contest is tonight, and we'll leave, you, we'll leave you with some shots from them setting up for today's events.
come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you.